Bunny Man. And I'm Crazy Juicy. And we are in the Eyes of Terror. And we've moved on to our August <laughs> selections. And that is Classics That Never Die. So mostly this one's going to be old Hammer all the time. This comes from a private collection that we have. It's a series of Hammer films. It is. This one you can also find on YouTube. I do apologize that um, these are ones that are pretty difficult to find. You can order them on Amazon, but as far as finding them on Tubby TV or Amazon Prime, they're, they're pretty difficult to find on free on any kind of free uh, database or anything, you would have to go and purchase your own DVD. Um, Actually, they're worth having. Yeah, the uh, box set, it's not even really a box set. The, it's called the Hammer Horror Series 8 Film Collection. And it has the movie that we're reviewing, and mostly the other ones. We found this at Walmart a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only like... It's only like six or seven dollars. It's not very much. Yeah. So. But tonight we're going to be doing Bride of Dracula. Well, before we get in, let's say that let's get everything out that we can. So we're going to be changing up some stuff. Yes. Uh, we're not going to do a play-by-play. -play. No, I think we're going to change it up a little bit to where we don't feel like we're kind of uh, giving away every single detail and um, kind of dragging it out and making it kind of boring for everybody. So we're going to do it slightly different. And we just watched the film. So we're going to it's sort of a first reaction mm -hmm. after the film. This is the first time we... Well, we watched this another time. Yeah. But this is sort of like a first outtake of it. Yeah. Um, and then we're also going to sort of shill for ourselves at the beginning instead of at the, at the end. Right. So, let's get the shilling out of the way. <laughs> we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. On we have a Redbubble. We're going to be working on getting out some more Halloween style things on our Redbubble if you guys want to keep a check on our red bubble we'll let you know when we add those halloween themes but we do have our red bubble account all of the previous illustrations for our movies that we've done bunny man has he we typically do have illustrations for all of the films that we've done and those are actually on our Redbubble account. So if you want to get any t-shirts or coffee mugs or anything like that with those illustrations on them, those are available on our Redbubble account. Except for the past few months. The past few months I haven't done anything because I've been really, really busy. Yeah. The past few he hasn't, but the majority are on there. So, and if you you're, And if you want some Halloween illustrations, we have those up from last year on our thir uh, 13 Nights of Horror uh, right, we, <laughs> we we killed ourselves. We got a bit overzealous one. last year, but it was fun. It was fun. It was fun one it, time. It, it was it was pretty crazy, <laughs> but it, it was fun. Okay, so let's continue with everything else. Uh, so, what are we drinking? I'm not drinking anything because I'm I'm pretty filled up. But um, what are you having? I am having Veska vodka. With Powell and Moh Mohini. Powell and Mahaney, Mo Mahoney. Powell and Mahoney Craft Cocktail Mixer, which is ginger beer. So, I'm a sort of a ginger beer snob. Uh, I'm also a vodka snob. So, the vodka is a very smooth 100% potato vodka. Yeah, that you can drink straight with no problem. And the ginger beer is, I like it because it's fiery. It's not sweet. It's a nice, it has a nice burn to it. Yeah. And that's the it way you. in the throat. And that's the way ginger beer should be. It shouldn't be sweet. So if you'd like a good ginger beer, this Powell and 
I want to say Mahoney, but it's M-A-H-O-N-E-Y. So it's like Mahoney. Craft Cocktail Mixers. Their version of ginger beer is Ooh. a good mixer. Did you find this at Walmart or? Um, no. I did not find it at Walmart. I found it... Where did I find that at? No. Food City? I either found it at Food City or Earth Fair. I think it was Earth Fair. I think you found it at Earth Fair. So... Uh, Walmart doesn't carry stuff yeah. like that. Walmart carries the sweeter ginger beer. Yeah. They don't carry stuff like that. I think I found that at Earth Fair. Mm -hmm. Again, we are not sponsored by any of these companies, but if you are one of these companies and you happen to be listening to us or know somebody who's part of these companies and would like to give us some money, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, yes, we also have a Patreon. I forgot about that. If you want to yes. support us. We have a Patreon, and if you would like to support us, we'd appreciate it. If not, hey, that's cool, too. If you just want to let people know us, know about us because you love us, that's hey. wonderful too. Yeah, because hey. we've hit over a thousand and two hundred subscribe uh, downloads since January of this year, and so that's been really awesome. We have most of the United States, so we're just trying to make it a little bit more interesting, condense it a little bit to where we can get more videos out. So more people can find us more interesting. Well, I, I just think, no, I just think more, just talking about it is a little bit more fun than giving a blow. And uh, I forgot to say that we do have a YouTube channel. Uh, we've been posting videos on our YouTube of us going out to other sh uh, to stores and buying, getting, looking at the Halloween stuff. Right, yeah. So. So we're, we're doing a couple more different things than what. We normally do to just try to expand a little bit. Yes. So, so yeah. let's get into the movie, shall we? So, Bride of Dracula, 1960. I thought it was Brides. Maybe it is Brides. It is Brides. It's plural. Brides. I, I apologize. It is plural. Brides of Dracula. Brides of Dracula, 1960. The movie is one hour and 25 minutes. I have 85 minutes because that's what it actually shows, but... I, I actually, it, when I put on the DVD, I did the readout and it said an hour 25. Yes, IMDB has eight, has it listed as 85 minutes, but it's the same. Yeah, yeah. It, it comes I, down to the same, whatever you want I just want don't want to do the it. math. Okay, sure. You can also find this on YouTube. Uh, but we have the hard copy. We have a DVD of it. The director is Terrence Fisher. The writers are Jimmy Sangster and Peter Bryson, Edward Percy, and Anthony Hines. Those are actually some pretty big names for the for the time era. Yes. And old Peter Cushing is in this film, and he's in a lot of Hammer films. Him and Christopher Lee are the two faces of Hammer. Mm -hmm. Peter Cushing's plays Dr. Van Helsing in this film. He's the man. Van Helsing. He's the big man in this film. Marietta Hunt plays Baroness Meinster. Yep. Uh, Yvonne McCure. Monlor plays Marianne Danielle. Frida... Jackson plays Greta. David Peel plays Baron Meinster. Miles. Malison? Malison, yeah. Plays Dr. Tobler. Henry Oscar plays Herr Lang. Mana Wash. Born? Born, yes. Some of these names make my eyes kind of <clears throat> go whoop. Uh, it's Frau Lang. She plays Frau Lang. Plays Frau, Frau Lang, yes. Um, Audrey. Melly. Okay, Melly plays Gina. Victor Brooks plays Hans. And many, many more at imbd.com. Yes, yes. 
And this film was nominated for the Saturn Award for the Best DVD Collection. It has some other awards, doesn't it? The Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films, USA, in 2006. And I forgot to write down what the synopsis of this film was. What the heck is wrong with me? We could just read it off the back. You can read it off the chat then. Marion. Mary Ann. Mary Ann. <laughs> Yvonne Monlor is traveling to Eastern Europe from Paris for a teaching position. She gets stranded at an inn after her stagecoach mysteriously leaves her. She is pers uh, persuaded to stay at Baroness Meinster's Chateau. During her stay, Marianne meets the Baroness's son, David Peel, who is chained to a wall. Feeling bad for the son, Marianne frees him, only to discover that he is a vampire. Luckily for her, Dr. Van Helsing, played by our lovely hero, Peter Cushing, is one of his on his way to rescue Marianne and destroy the vampire. Oh, that's that's not really the synopsis. That's what's in this one. Hmm. Hammer Films is one of the most celebrated horror studios in the history of cinema. Well, that is the synopsis of that one, one movie. So of that of the disc <laughs> disc. One. No, no, no. It's each one of them is broken down. Yes, into discs. Disc one, disc three. Yeah, disc one, Brides of Dracula, The Curse of the Werewolf is also on this disc. Phantom of the Opera, disc two. Okay, 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 okay. You see all these jackets? I would love to have those posters. Those posters are awesome. They don't make them like that anymore. No, they really don't. They're awesome. They're like all hand done and everything. Yeah, it's all digital now. You can see all the little sweat beads mm -hmm. on the werewolf's head and everything. Cushion's like, huh? Yeah. Did you say something? What's going on, guys? You said, sorry, did you say something to me? That's what the look on his face is like. <laughs> sorry, did you say something to me? So, a little bit of the background. If you've never seen a Hammer film or any really sort of early British, even modern British to some extent, has a lot of homage to uh, stage acting. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, a lot of these guys were actually stage performers. They were theater performers, and they actually looked at film as a lesser form, a lesser uh, art form than stage. So they would actually switch back and forth between doing film, and then they would go back to the theater for a while, and then they would do a film, and then go back to the theater for a while. But the sets are always this... You know, these elaborate theatrical sets, they're sort of shot that way, too. They don't do a lot of close-ups, and there's a lot of exaggeration in their faces and projection of the voices. So, if you've never seen, like, an early 60s film, that's uh, Hammer really does, and I really enjoy that. So, let's get into the movie. So, the film starts out with this poem... And it sounds real dark and menacing. That's what I liked about it. Well, even the music. I like really gothic style things. And um, the music sounded pretty dark and menacing. And it showed this like black, dead kind of forest at dusk. Well, even like at the, the beginning, like when we first enter the film uh, with... The, the casting list because they always do a casting list mm -hmm. with and then well that's what it's showing when it's yeah. playing this but well no no the casting after it shows the casting list it shows this dark yeah 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 but the like, casting list is, is there's this castle on this mountain and it's all hand painted mm -hmm. and oh yeah and I forgot to mention this movie is in Technicolor so score mm. so it says Transylvania land of dark forests dread mountains and black unfathomed lakes still the home of magic and devilry as the 19th century draws to its close count dracula monarch of all vampires is dead but his disciples live on to spread the cult and corrupt the world Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. 
So you see a red-headed lady in a carriage. Very bouncy carriage. Yes, and she's like freaking out. She's bouncing around and she's grabbing hold to the side and she's like, driver, can you slow down? You know, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but every Dracula movie, they always open up with a bouncy carriage. <laughs> like, in, you, get, you know, they have yet to make Benadryl. <laughs> What does Benadryl have to do with anything? Can you imagine being bouncing around in one of those characters without Benadryl? What would Benadryl do? I mean, not Benadryl. Dramamine? Dramamine, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> do they have allergies? <laughs> what does well, Benadryl... I'm pretty sure they have allergies too. What does so. Benadryl have to do with anything? What is it supposed to do for them? Benadryl's for allergies. Well, to get rid of the hay fever because there's hay there. <laughs> Go. <Duh. Ball. laughs> Duh. Not everybody gets seasick, babe. I know, but I mean, can you imagine bouncing around in that? Yeah, but if you don't get seasick, it's not going to bother you. It's going to be annoying. I, I think that's more carriage sick. <laughs> it's going to be annoying. <laughs> you have yet to get your carriage bite on. <laughs> it's going to be annoying, but yeah. if you get if you don't have motion sickness, yeah, it's just going to be annoying. Especially if you're tired and you're trying to rest, and then somebody's jarring you all over the place. You're going to be like, hey. Trying to take a nap back here. What that? Yeah. Actually, I think uh, Dracula Dead on Loving It actually made a really great joke about that whole <laughs> bouncy carriage thing. What? There was like two couple were just like sort of sitting there, just like unfazed by the bouncy carriage, and the other guy just like, wow! You know, like <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Lay your hands in the air. Mouth's like you just don't. Never mind. <laughs> Gotta be there. Yeah. So, the driver, he's going super fast, like we were saying, and, uh, you know, he's like, well, we're in Transylvania, and I'm just trying to get the heck out of Dodge, because uh, you don't want to be here in the dark. It's bad news. So, he's just trying to uh, get get where he's got to go and get out of there. Well, he ends up having to stop, because there's a big log in the middle of the road, so he stops. And he tries to struggle with this log, and... First, he thinks it's a body. Well, it sort of looked like a body, I mean, to give him and credit. It really did, and he goes to move it, and it's kind of like... It doesn't really seem stiff like a log. It seems kind of... Pliable. Rubbery. Yeah. So, he moves it out of the way. You know what it came from? Mm -hmm. It came from a rubber tree. Sure. So he moves it, and the weird thing is, he gets back on the stagecoach, and he goes to leave, and, uh... Tall, dark, and handsome. This guy comes from out of the woods and climbs on the back of the stagecoach and hitches a ride. And no one notices. Right. So they get on into town. The driver helps the lady out of the... He sort of doesn't help her out. He just sort of is like, get get out. It, it, dark, dark, get yeah. out. He kind of just takes her crap and throws it out and mm. helps her out. And he's, before she, basically as soon as she gets into the inn, he's gone. Yeah, and then the inn people are like, it's just it's sort of the whole first scene is interesting. Just yeah. So she gets into the inn, and she's all like, whoa, what's up? You know, what's going on? And she sits down, and they're like, oh, you can't stay here, blah, blah, blah. And we don't have any rooms. Yeah, and then tall, dark, and handsome hitchhiker walks through the door, and he's like, what's up, everybody? And everybody just sort of disperses. And Well, this is after he pays the, uh, yeah, the, the, the driver, driver to drive away. So... Well, and the innkeeper says, we don't have any rooms. You can't stay here. And then when uh, the lady that has the castle comes in, then they, evidently then they have rooms. Yeah, because they're, they're all afraid of this baroness or whatever. And then they give her the best of the, the wine. Not that, not that valley crap, but, you know, the cellars, the good cellar stuff. Yeah. Because I guess this inn is known for, or this area is known for their valley wine, but it's not good enough for anybody else, you know, for, for anybody of high breeding. 
Mm, yeah. And she doesn't even drink the wine. That's the funny part. No. She just kind of holds it in her hand. And then she invites, uh, creepily in my opinion, uh, the uh, Marianne to back to her castle for the for the night because she likes young, well-bred women and she misses their company. Yeah, she misses having company. No, no, guests. No, no, no high-bred, high-bred guests or well-bred guests. Guests that come from breeding. Yeah. I think that's exactly what she said. So they get to the castle. And Marianne gets to meet Greta, which is the Baroness's housemaid. Slash, I think, nurse slash local nut job. She's, she's everything. She's the housemaid. She's her confidant. She's her housekeeper. She's her bartender. She's her cook. She's everything. She's a psycho. She's a woman. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's pretty out there. She is. So, we, we meet Greta. So at dinner, the Baroness explains that her son lives in the castle with her, and Greta looks after her. So that night, Mary Ann, she sneaks from her room and goes over to the Baron's room, which is the son of the uh, Baroness's. And he, he's a he's a young looking chap, and he but he's peculiarly shackled. <laughs> just just come closer so I could see you. As you can see, I can't move. Come in, young boy. Let me see you. Oh wait, this is not the Christmas Carol. <laughs> come closer so I can see you. You're quite beautiful. But he his, he only has one leg shackled, so he's just and it's pretty long shackling. But if you didn't notice, the Baroness was like saying like, oh, well, you know, my son, everybody thinks he's dead. And we used to have a lot of guests and all this stuff, but he started doing stuff and I, people started disappearing. But he's locked away through that door over there. You know, that one door, it's locked. Don't go in there. But it's that door. <laughs> that door. The, with the weird, ominous looking door. Just don't go in that one. You know that one right there? That one right there. Just so it's not is just so it's perfectly clear, that one. Not that one or that one. That one right there. Um, you, you know, know one, two, three, over, one, two, three. That one right there. You know, I'm I'm gonna hang this sign that says do not enter ominous door, bad stuff happens here. <laughs> over this door. Just just don't enter it. Just don't mind this door. <laughs> hmm. So, of course, there's a whole bunch of questions Marianne has, like, oh, what's going on? And then they all retire to bed, and we get some interesting pajamas. Yes, the night coats. Oh, my God. They yeah. should have been burned. They're ugly. They're hideous. Hideous. Well, it, it, it's, it, it's like if a doily and ruffles got together and produced these pajamas. They weren't the pajamas. They were the night coats. Well, whatever. Sorry, the dressing coats. So, Marianne goes in, grabs the key, because she... because the Baron was serenading, basically, on the balcony of, go give me the key. I'm not a bad guy. You know, you, know, you could trust somebody who's shackled. <laughs> you know, and goes, you know what? I'm not a bad guy. What I need you to do, though, is go get a key because I'm not a bad guy. This key that's hidden, you know, because when people aren't bad, they're shackled into a room that's the innermost room of a castle, and the only key that can free them is a hidden key. Yeah, yeah. So... 
she goes into uh, into uh, the the Baroness's room and goes through another door to reveal there's a, a key rack there. And she luckily picks the one key that unlocks the shackle. Once again, I wonder if there's a sign that goes, this one unlocks the shackles. Mm -hmm. Because, seriously, you would expect at least the beginner set of janitorial keys at this point <laughs> hanging up there. Just, you know, maybe we're starting at least 50. 50 keys. But no, it's just this one key. Don't, you know, let's just chill in there. And, and then she... Uh, she goes out uh, through the window and nearly slips off the daggum balcony, which she would have probably not been living if she had. And, and then she crawls along the edges and does some uh, secret agent things, secret whatever. Mm -hmm. And then she ties a hanky. a hanky on the key because reasons... And tosses it to him, to the next balcony, because the room she was staying in was the room across from his. It was across and up, yeah. so it was this angle and down. Mm -hmm. Conveniently, so he could throw keys across it. That's why they designed this. The architects were saying, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some guy shackled in this <laughs> inner room. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, so let's make this convenient for whomever <laughs> decides to toss him a key later on. So let's design the balcony like this. Yeah. This up angle down thing. And I was thinking the entire time, I'm like, if she accidentally missed or threw really crappily, this whole movie would end right there. Like, Brides of Dracula would not happen. It'd be girl throws key. Guy still shackled movie. <laughs> it would not be that interesting. She would still. He would have still beat her. Yeah, they because would have just had you know his brides in that room with him. He'd still be pimping them out, just be shackled up in the room. Yeah, because they were in love. <laughs> they would still be brides of Dracula, just brides of Dracula in that room. Yeah. Do you ever think that Brides of Dracula get jealous of each other? He bit me first. No, he bit me. <laughs> he saw me first. No, he saw me first. <laughs> he only saw you because he saw me. <sighs> Whatever. So, Marianne... I hate myself for saying that. <laughs> so, I, I'm sort of confused. So, Marianne throws the key... He sort of, he gets out of the shackling, and then he sort of disappears. Turn. He tells her to get dressed and meet him, meet him downstairs. Oh, yeah. And then so she runs down in her, oh, I like this coat. This coat is like her sort of name state at this point, though. She only, you know, has one coat. So and she goes down, and then, like, the, the mother's freaking out, and... Mm -hmm. He's like, look at me, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, what did you do? Why did you let him go? And all this other stuff. And then she books it out of the castle into the forest. And just randomly runs through the forest. You skipped a whole bunch of stuff. Did I skip a whole bunch of stuff? Mm -hmm. What did I skip? He tell He makes his mother look at him. Dun, dun, dun. And because she didn't want to, and then he bites her. For some odd reason, I think that I thought that was later. No, he bites the mother, and then he takes off, and then Greta cries out. She's crying out, and you're. It sounds like she's laughing. Yeah, but she's crying. And then she laughs, actually laughs. And still sounds like she's laughing. And then Marianne comes running in there, but they're upstairs now, not downstairs. And it's in the room where he was locked up. And she's like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And Greta's like, he's free. 
Did you set him free? Do you know what you've done? Do you realize what kind of monster he is? And Marianne's like, he was a man and you tied him up like he was a monster and Greta was like, he was a monster. Yeah. And they went through that whole spiel. And then Marianne asked where the Baroness was and she's like, you want to see the Baroness? I'll show you the Baroness, and she turns her around, and the Baroness okay, okay. is sitting yeah, in the chair. She's, well, she's she, she's dead in the chair, but yeah, she's her, she's her, dead. dead. Yeah. Um. So that's when Marianne runs downstairs, and then runs out the door, and then runs through the woods. Yeah. Okay. So she's running through the woods, and and I don't. Like, somebody lost, I guess, is the best way to right. put it. And then it. she and basically trips and falls and passes out. Yeah. And then the that, next morning, Van Helsing finds her. Yes. Van Helsing, played by her good old chap, Peter Cushing, comes in, and I, and I find this sort of weird. He was like, go fetch me the traveling rug, because everybody travels with a traveling rug. It's more like a throw blanket. Yeah, but he calls it a traveling rug, and I'm like... Maybe I should travel with a traveling rug. I basically have a traveling rug in my car. It's a throw blanket. Yeah. I always keep a spare hoodie, too. Yeah. It's good to have a traveling rug. And a traveling hoodie. hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea, you guys. So, and he puts those smelling salts under her nose and wakes her up. And he's like, are you okay? Are you all right? And then he puts her into the carriage. Yep. And he takes her to the inn because he's getting a room there. And he, you know, gets her something hot to drink. And So basically, it's just a big giant circle at this yep. point. Yeah. And then, and then the thing is, is she's supposed to be going to this academy because she's a student teacher. Mm-hmm. That was sort of the whole reason for her even being here. Mm-hmm. And the Baroness is like, oh, I'll make sure you get to set sad thing and we find out that the Baroness through Greta's lamenting and like oh you spoiled the boy and blah 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 and you bring them all these pretty ladies to you know suck their blood blah 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 I'm like so at no point anybody's gonna be like are we supposed to have a student teacher starting today you know in French and diploma or whatever like diplomacy basically I'm assuming Mm -hmm. and so the other guys you know like the head teacher is like yeah but Nye. Nye. Mm-hmm. So if if they went through and, and killed her, no one would care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because ever I think, but all the villagers knew what was going on because the old like, you know, the innkeeper and all that. So on the way to the school, Van Helsing asks Marianne to tell her every detail of what happened. Because he told her that with this sickness, it's very important that he knows every detail. Because there could be a huge outbreak. And he wants to make sure that everything is contained. And he, so therefore he needs to know every single detail. Then he tells her to forget it all afterward. He tells her to forget it all. Yeah, she's like, tell me everything and then forget it all. I don't remember that part, but okay. Yeah. So he takes her to the school so she could start her job. And then, of course, the uh, the the headmaster freaks out and is like, you're not allowed any followers. These are my rules. And he gives us his business card. And I guess, you know, like, his business card is literally bullet points mm-hmm. of, like, everything he's ever accomplished. Yeah, because he's like a, a doctor. He has a doctorate of philosophy and this and this and this and this. And, this and the headmaster was like, oh, 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 okay. Well, you're welcome here any time. Mm-hmm. You're like, yeah. oh, 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 okay. Well, you pick my job off the floor. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then Van Helsing's like, eh, I'll see you later. <laughs> Just sort of like, whatever. He's like, and he was so yeah, <laughs> and then he uh, goes. Uh, and then his wife goes tells him, tell you know, 
takes out Marianne and she, and like another girl that's been there for a little bit who knows I guess people is like go show her around so we'll go show her where she's gonna be staying and, and, and know a few people they're roommates yeah and a few people like inter- start introducing her to you know mm-hmm. because I mean you know at the same time he was freaking out that she was late and all this other stuff and he was ready to kick her to the door mm-hmm. and you like get out but Van Helsing shows up with his bullet point business card. And <laughs> of course, everybody knows Van Helsing, I guess. His, uh, how do you call it, uh, reputation precedes him, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I would hate to see him when he's like 80 years old. He's like, let me get the scroll out. Here, here's my scroll. I need that back, thank you. <laughs> Let me roll that back up. <laughs> Three hours later. <laughs> Dang it, I gotta unroll it again. I'd be so annoyed. Gotta prove myself. Here you go. Yep. Blop. <laughs> Blop. Just so you know, just record that <laughs> crap. Here you go. Beep. <laughs> Did you hear that? Let me rewind it. Beep. <laughs> Let me put it on this xylo or the uh, this your turntable here. <laughs> so then, Van Helsing goes to the town and helps the priest to cleanse the town. Yes, because we find out that the priest invited him. Yes. To the village because some stuff just ain't right. It's quite funny how this meeting happened because Van Helsing goes into. The pub, and uh, the priest is sitting there, and he's quite perturbed because of some things that have happened. There's a guy in town. He's upset because uh, his daughter was killed and um, died under mysterious circumstances. Let's... Yes, and um, she ended up being buried, actually, in the church grounds. And the priest found out about this, and he was quite upset because he said, that's not typically what we do, and you know she shouldn't have been buried there. And then the guy got upset, and he was like, you know, she deserves to be buried on church grounds just like anybody else. And the priest was like, no, no, she should not have been buried there. And the guy got up, got all upset, and the, pre- the priest was like, you know, we have to move her. That's... That's not right. Well, the guy got all all right and everything, and then he left, and the priest was just sitting there, and Van Helsing came over and gave him a shot of brandy, I think it was, and um, he introduced himself, and he was like, he just kind of looked at him, and he said, you asked me to come here, and the priest was like, oh my, I didn't think that you would come. He's like, Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Like you're 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 a huge blessing being here because I don't know what I would do, yada yada yada, but Yeah. They figured it out anyway. More girls were were killed in the village with the strange markings on their neck. Van Helsing continues to investigate. Gina, a girl at the school, who was a student teacher alongside Marianne. She gets killed. Van Helsing investigates her death along with another doctor. He finds marks on her neck and he tells the headmaster that no one is to go into her room. They are to get the undertaker to put her in a casket, take her out to the barn. Well, we missed a, like a huge sort of scene where Van Helsing knows that now it's a vampire infestation. Okay. Okay, so Van Helsing is, so he's at, after the bar and, you know, this whole girl's moved from hollow ground into unhallowed ground. And he's, so we return to see the nurse slash maid slash crazy townswoman. And she's over the grave site 
of the young girl and is like come and rise and we see a hand pop out of the ground and then we see how well the grave diggers do not do their job and she just pops open the, the, the lid and she crawls out as as Van Helsing looks upon in horror. And this really is a really great scene just for the pure how extensive Peter Cushing's acting ability is just by using his his facial features mm -hmm. because he actually looks terrified of what he is witnessing mm -hmm. and peter cushing is a very gaunt fellow mm -hmm. high cheekbones and right so yeah he has very slim and if you've never seen peter cushing he's the he plays a, a general in star wars in the original series uh i think Hacking or something like that. I forgot. So he had them to take Gina's body, put it in a casket, and have it in the barn and have two people to guard the body until he was to return and he would be back by nightfall. Yeah, and the uh, the coffin is, uh, uh, again, it goes back to old folklore. They padlocked it. Well, not just padlocked it. I don't think you catch what it was made out of. What was it made out of? Cedar. Okay. Uh, cedar and brass. And that's old vampire folklore. That's like East. So what was the cedar about? You know, like how cedar, t you know, keeps away moths and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's sort of the same concept with vampires. Anything strong smelling, anything that covers up the smell of death. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from a, from a sort of a standpoint, like garlic is a very strong smelling and vampires are definitely opposed to it is because it covers up the smell of death it's one of the very few natural uh plants they can mm -hmm. and cedar is the same way it's yeah anything that covers up the smell of death yeah most insects don't like the smell of cedar. yeah so you know, that you know just goes back to the vampire folklore of these are the walking dead and earlier vampire mythology is very much like they were not handsome people. They they were literally the walking dead that sucked the blood of mm -hmm. the living. So. so Van Helsing returns as Gina is actually turning into a vampire and tries to get Marianne to go with her. Well, so, but they padlock the, uh, the, uh, the coffin and the padlocks... Fall they just, off. Yeah, they just fall off and hit the ground. They Without just go, being... Un no, they don't even unlock. They're, they literally just, like, fall out of the holders. And then she's... You know, then she comes out of the coffin. And then... The first thing she really says to Marianne is, like, come here so I can give you a big old wet one, baby. Let's snog a little bit. Vampire snog. No, she tells her that... Um, they could both have the Baron. We could share him. She doesn't say anything about kissing her. No, no, she does. She hugging does. Hugging her. Or... No, she does. She's like, come here, let me kiss you, and I can and let me hug you, and I can kiss you. Yeah. I don't remember that. She said that they could both share the Baron. But I mean, then she's like, but she's she wanted to change her. That was the whole goal. Let me come here, and let me hug you, and I'll kiss you. It was not a romantic thing as much as a, I'm going to suck your blood, come here. And she's trying to put a spell over and stuff like that and entice her. To, and then she's like, oh, well, I love the Baron. Because she she is, even at the beginning, when they first meet, she was telling her all about the Baron as she was burning something in the fireplace at the school. Toast. And um, she was like, oh, I wish I could have that. I wish I could have the Baron type thing. Mm -hmm. So she's always been jealous of this whole yeah. weird interaction that they had. So Yeah. So Gina tells Marianne that the Baron is at the old windmill. Van Helsing gets the headmaster to keep a look after Marianne. And he goes... What? He, okay, so he goes back to the, the chateau or the castle or whatever, and he meets the Baroness, who has turned into a vampire, and she's actually ashamed of what she has turned into. 
Who is? The Baroness. Yeah. And so she she's like, I want I I wish I could have relief. Relief. And Van Helsing is like, Well, I can give you relief relief. You know, I could you won't be cursed anymore, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to die. Basically, yeah. without saying you're gonna to have to die. So she lays down well so he actually and then actually the Baron comes back and to Van Helsing at the castle trying to like stop him and he throws out the the cross that he's been carrying around with him and uses that wasn't at the castle. That was at the no, 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 no. That was the at the windmill. castle. You you disappeared halfway through the movie the, the, during this whole scene. Okay. Okay. So so he tries to stop the Baron at the castle, and then so he throws the table over on him, trying to basically kill him or what you know, or at least twist his ankle a little bit so he can't run as fast. Uh, sort of succeeds on that, and then. So there's this whole chase scene, and, and this is where I don't get it. He throws the can the long candle opera, and he's like, "Ha ha! You'll never catch me now." And Van Helsing just throws the candle opera away, and then the Baron climbs into the carriage and disappears from the carriage, and then he kills. This is. At the beginning of the film, this isn't no. at the end of the film. This is towards the end. And then he kills the Baroness with the stake through the art. And we get the first kill. That's not the first kill. Yes, it is. He killed all those girls. And then they came back. They're not truly dead until they're truly dead. They're not truly dead until they're truly dead. <laughs> <laughs> they're undead. Yes. So they're not dead. <laughs> so I give this a four out of five. Uh, because I like that it was a really big close up of him putting the uh, stake through the heart. And then it was just a tasteful amount of blood and then the sound of death. And that was the entire kill scene. Nothing spectacular. And then he ripped draperies off the wall and then flung them over her body. Yeah. That's when he came back. So. And then we meet Dr. Tobler. That was scene. This is scene three now. Did you miss that too? Mm-mm. No. Okay. Because, I mean, you're jumping way ahead. But I, the Dr. Tobler character is an interesting character because he's all like, I'm a man of science. I don't believe any of that weird witch you know or the, the monolithic belief system you have he's taking these weird pills too mm -hmm. and he's drinking the priest's wine and he's like I didn't mean to drink you out of house and home I really don't understand what Dr. Tobler was supposed to be though like I don't know if he's supposed to be the comic relief or the assistant or he's really played no role whatsoever other than I liked his coat that was it I think He's supposed to represent skepticism. The um, the atypical MD of that time period, because they were very much a realist. They believed in science. They believed that this is how things were supposed to be. You know, that's the way they were. That's the way they thought. They didn't believe in. All this hocus pocus bull crap. Yeah, and then he goes talks to the 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 headmaster and his wife, and then so we get to the point where the co <laughs> to the coffin. So we sort of backtrack because we sort of got lost in our I guess our, our non-existent existent notes. Yeah, I didn't really mention him. Uh, I just wanted to bring him up because I really didn't understand what he was supposed to be. I mean, he was an interesting character, but really played no part whatsoever. In yeah, he wasn't very significant. That's when I wrote, that's really why I didn't mention him. Well, I th because we mentioned him in the credits, so I felt like we should have mentioned it. Like, and I just it was sort of something I wanted to hash out. Uh, and then then we go to the coffin scene. 
and then now we're at the mill. So have you noticed in every horror movie that features vampires and monsters, at least monsters, they always enjoy going to the old, the old mill, the old abandoned mill? Yes, I did notice that. I did, I did notice that. I'm like, does every town have an old abandoned mill? I know our town does, doesn't it? Yeah. So, maybe that's where all the monsters hide out, was the old abandoned mills. Maybe we should get our pitchforks and uh, torches and... I don't know, it's liable to go up and smoke real easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I should ask my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we meet Greta again, the crazy, crazy maid and his wives. Mm -hmm. And Greta, so again, Van Helsing releases his uh, cross, and everybody's the wives are all like, ah, oh, except for Greta, because Greta's not a vampire, so she charges at him and tries to tackle Van Helsing, but it's not successful, and she flies and f falls off the stairwell, and we have our second death, which is the maid takes a tumble. I give this a 2 out of 5. It's sort of a meh death. How do you know for sure she's dead? There's no blood. But she went through the floor. And she didn't come back. At least in this movie. She might have come back in the sequel. I'm not sure yet. It's questionable. Questionable. There's no blood. Yeah. No blood came out of her mouth. But they didn't show her mouth. so. But they did. But in old horror movies, usually when they pin away... See, in modern horror movies, it's blood out of the mouth. In old horror movies, it's panning away. They have to pan away to go to the next scene. No, they have to... But they're not allowed to show death on the screen. All the rules. All the movie rules. So they pan away. Next. Yep. <laughs> So, and then Marianne, I mean, the Baron, he, he's just obsessed with Marianne. So he comes and comes to the school and turns into a big, giant, hairy bat. The hairiest, fakest bat I've ever seen. Flappy, hairy bat. Yeah, flappy, hairy bat. And he goes through the window, basically. He transforms and goes through that window to get Marianne because she's at the school held up in... Of course, Van Helsing tells her to wear a rosary around her neck and... She takes it off. But the second she saw that back go through that window, she, like, dodged for that thing. And then, uh, at, th at this time, that's going on, Van Helsing is in the old mill uh, fighting off a vampire bite. Yeah. And I actually think this was... Old home, old rat. Old home <laughs> remedy. God, I can't talk. So, I don't think this has ever been done in any other uh, Dracula movie that Not I've ever seen. That I'm aware of. So, Van Helsing literally gets bitten by the uh, by Dracula or the Baron. And he g puts a... It's not a skewer. A, a brand. <laughs> a cattle brand. A hot... Cattle brain. No, Van Helsing got hungry. He decided to put, it, put, you know, he was making himself a kebab. He was, and then he put the cattle brain in there, and he was like, "I'll eat that after I'm done with this." So, he puts the cattle brain in there, and then he gets his flask of holy water out, and he's like struggling the entire time. And again, we see Peter Cushing's, you know, he's he's non-spoken body movements is there becoming is he's struggling with himself and then he takes the cow brand puts it on to where the the vampire bites are and then he empties the uh puts the holy water onto the the bite and then the bites disappear as the brides look at him in shock and awe for some weird reason i i don't know if you put a cross I, like across on the ledge so they can't come and get them. I don't know what's, what was that all about. but I don't think they realized that 
their ailment could be cured. Yeah. And I think, but I think it has to be caught like right as you get bitten. I don't think there's before you turn. Yeah, before you turn, because he's uh, he's like I'm, he's trying to find himself not turning. Because if he does turn, then it's all lost. Mm -hmm. And then the Baron comes back with Marianne and Toe into the barn. Windmill. 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 Old abandoned windmill mill. Meal, meal. And then uh, the Baron sees an opportunity to kick over the, the uh, brazier and set the mill on fire, but not before Van Helsing throws uh, the holy water that is in his flask onto the vampire, onto the Baron's face, and we get to kill three. I'm melting! The Baron gasps to death. Yeah, that's how the movie ends. That still makes my head hurt just thinking about it. I'm still just not understanding. Yeah. I'm really annoyed with the ending of this film. It just... It, yeah, it just... I mean, like, okay, I understand that the... That all it, the trouble everybody went through, okay? The Baron went through all that trouble to go get Marianne. He brings her in there, okay? He's doing all this flexing in front of Helsing, and he's all, Van Helsing, I have Marianne. She's come back to me. Marianne, look in my eyes. And Van Helsing's like, don't look into his eyes, Marianne. And he's all, I'm going to make her one of mine. She will be my bride, yada, yada. And Van Helsing flung the water in his face, and his face started melting. Marianne runs to Van Helsing. The Baron gets P.O.'d, so he knocks over the fire, and it starts burning. Van Helsing takes Marianne, and they run out the back. The Baron runs out the front. And the Baron's just, uh, 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 he has like a asthma attack. 20 minute asthma attack and then just kills over. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Is he dead? He's dead. You got to be freaking kidding me. That, are you? After all what? this, after all this problem, all of this issue with this whole thing, it just takes some holy water that he had the entire time. You gotta be kidding me. So, yeah. You gotta be kidding me. A priest could have just spat in his face and killed him <laughs> at this point. <laughs> All he would have had to do was pray while he was doing it. Yeah. yeah. It is It is a pathetic ending to it. Really, I think it's a pretty good movie. All that build up for somebody just to sling some water in somebody's face. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. Yeah. I'm not happy with the ending. Like I said, I, for all that build up, all that build up. Uh, and this is the ending that we get for a relatively really good yeah, movie. Yeah. So that's why I give this score, I give this movie a 3.5 out of 5. It could have been better, but that ending... That I, is like eating one of the best plates of food you could possibly eat and getting down to the bottom of it and finding pubic hair in the bottom of the plate. Yeah. I mean, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awful. No, it's just... it's Or even worse is when you watch a movie and you all realize it's a dream. And you're like, I'm going to kill the person. Yeah. No, I get it. I uh, honestly, it, I mean, it just really, really irritates me. The ending of this movie, and I, I, I didn't watch the. I mean, when we first watched it, I think I fell asleep. The initial time we watched it, so the ending was fresh to me, and yeah, I was like, this is. No, we didn't finish it the first time we watched no, it. We were did. both tired. Yeah. I don't remember seeing the end, babe. Okay, so we both didn't watch the end, and. We did for the first time, and it's like, <laughs> what? So, so what? What kind of crack were they smoking? What would have saved 
the Baron was an inhaler? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just the weirdest ending, and it was just so annoying. I, you know, like you said, after all that build-up. And then what happened to the rest of the brides? Did they die in the fire? I didn't think vampires could die in fire, right? They could burn, yeah. Well, Were they not smart enough to exit a building? I mean... Yeah. Everybody else was. So... Do they need assistance on exiting a building? I mean, I don't know. So I know this is 30 years apart. But... Uh, You watched the, you know, the original Dracula, the Universal Dracula. Mm -hmm. So, how do you think it compared? I mean, did you, what did you, I guess, what did you like it or not? Like, how did you feel about it? Or I, I don't know what how to say because I don't want to really compare the both because they're completely different. They are completely different. I think I sort of like this Dracula a little bit better, or this. It's not Dracula, but it is. Because I'm not quite sure if the Dracula, if Dra the Dracula that they were referring to at the beginning, because he said that the Baron was dead, like she spread the rumor the Baron was dead. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he was supposed to be. But well, then they, Greta said she did that because of the illness that he had, and she didn't want him to hurt people. Yeah, but Greta, if you didn't pick up, also during her like lamenting, said that. You entertained basically. You basically entertained Dracula, mm. and that's what caused the Baron to turn into a vampire. Yeah, yeah. So I guess Dracula is dead, but the Baron. Okay, so the so the mother was friends with Dracula and entertained Dracula. Dracula, in turn, bit her son, and because of that, Greta killed Dracula? The, the Dracula. No, I think... I don't know... We could assume that they want us to assume that's what happened. Yeah. Because Greta, the character Greta, is way out there. Yeah. So we can assume that... With the attachment that she has to this family, if someone, say, Dr the Dracula, were to have bitten or attacked Baron, mm -hmm. she probably would have killed him. Or the father did, and that's why he's not in the picture anymore. Because there's no mention of the father at all, except for during the lamenting part. You know, it's like you... you. So do you honestly think that the mother... The mistress would have gotten it the pregnant. The mistress. The baroness would have gotten pregnant by Dracula. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that that wouldn't make any no, sense. No, no. I'm babe. not saying that Dracula is the baronet, his father. I'm saying maybe the father killed Dracula instead of Greta. That's then what, what the heck happened to him then? That he may have died too during that fight i don't know there's no mention there just says or the father died of old age i don't know because i mean the baroness was pretty up there in her right so it would make more sense that greta would have killed dracula yeah because we greta the, has that psychotic attachment to the family yeah she's been with the family for 20 years and we could assume that the baroness Married an older man, and she was relatively young, let's say, at earliest 17. During the time frame that, you know. Right. Well, they said that Greta's been with the family for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying the Baroness would have married an older man just because of how marriages, right. no, how marriages were back then. You know, older men right. would marry younger women. Right. For breeding purposes. I hate to put it that way, but yes. Mm -hmm. And so there would be... So she would have married somebody... So he could have just simply died of old age. Mm -hmm. So, But they brought... the You know, it was a family. All three of them moved there to Transylvania. And then, like I said, 
they entertained, and then she said that you entertained, and you entertained basically the devil himself, which would have been Dracula. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what, and then he turned, and then all you've done since then is bring in young, pretty girls for him to kill. Right. To feed his hunger, yeah. And it, and now, oddly enough, I, I didn't, I just really didn't put this two and two together, but... Um, they own said building or uh, said thing, said school, mm -hmm. because he says, "Oh, you know what a lovely place you have, such as you know with such a low rent." Yeah, you know, and then they're like, "Well, you know, we rent from the baronet." The baron, he's like, "I am the baron," you know, but they could be sending out fake. Uh, certificates i guess and invitations to the school and that's how they're bringing because she seems to only be like young well-bred women for her son and then that log like i it could be the carriage driver tall dot guy isn't are in cahoots i mean they're obviously in cahoots with the baroness that's how he's they're bringing them in maybe possibly mm. i'm still trying to figure out the name though like dracula's bride but it could be just for bringing people into the theater type thing that they were known to do back then i don't know so which one each one of them has their own superiority but which one was more enjoyable? Do you think this one or the thirty Universal Dracula? I don't think you can really do it that way. Yeah. I like this one. I like a lot of parts about this one, but the ending just burns me. Well, you know, I, did you? I don't know if you know this or not, but in the Universal film, there is they don't actually have things. Really? Yeah. But in this one, they do. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to the sort of like the sexualization aspect mm -hmm. of vampires. Uh, I was actually watching this like old documentary, and they were saying that originally vampires really didn't bite in the neck mm -hmm. because it really wouldn't make a lot of sense, you know, the struggling and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so it's more of a sort of a hint of sexuality you know than it is you know because the neck is in Rogers and Stone mm -hmm. and then the fangs are penetrative force so it's more about sexuality than it is anything else that's what vampires portray mm -hmm. and I think this one did it really well with a younger a younger Dracula like being yeah blonde hair fair skinned so you want to end it here yeah any other final words? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. I just didn't care for the ending. You're going to rage about the ending for the, for a while, aren't you? Yep, yep. I'm asthmatic and it bothers me. Well, you know, maybe maybe that's what finally killed him because he didn't, you know, he, he forgot his emergency inhaler. <laughs> and he kicked over the brazier. Where's my albuterol? Pro air. I need the pro air. And, and maybe when he kicked over the brazier and he started the fire and then all the hay caught, he didn't expect it to go into the air like it did. And it went into his lungs and along with the inhalation. He and just needed this. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what he needed, and no one was there. Marianne was supposed to carry it, but she forgot about it because she isn't that bright, obviously, you know, because she takes off the rosary and all this other stuff. We can blame Marianne for everything. Marianne, she traded teams and at the most inopportune time. Yeah. yeah. She dropped the ball, or the inhaler, I don't know. You know, she could have just, you know, just really not have thrown that key. This whole movie would have been much shorter if <laughs> that key fell. <laughs> and so.
He picked the wrong bride. He gave the wrong chick the rose. Yeah. See? Well, so, but he still has options, though. He had the uh, the townie. He had the, the, you know, the sophomore. And then he had the freshman. So he was, he had his options. Or a French girl, British girl, and Eastern European. Well, he's bringing in girls from out of town. He had lots of options. Yeah. Possibilities were endless. But he really liked redhead French women. Yeah. He likes his croissants to be buttery and rich. <laughs> no, he's rich. Never mind. Buttery, I guess. He really liked the coat. It was plaid. You know, he really liked plaid coats. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You like plaid coats. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. I guess that's all for Brides of Dracula. You guys be sure to check out our Halloween store videos on YouTube. Yeah, we're going to be uploading. Hopefully, we can get those accomplished without showing too much of ourselves because, you know, I'm kind of camera shy and uh, I still have some of my winter weight and I really don't want to reveal those things. So. Where you had your winter weight from last winter and then it's <laughs> going to <head> go winter <laughs> again. But, um, you know. Anyway. And then, yeah, check out our merch store. Uh, we already did all that. And we you? did all that, yeah. And then, and you th just feel like I'm forgetting something. I hate that feeling. We're tired, guys. We're ready to go to bed. But um, anyway, again, this film is actually on YouTube as well. If you guys want to check it out, there, The Brides of Dracula, 1963. 1960. 1960. I apologize. A lot of these are in the 60ish area. And it's a Hammer film, the Hammer Horror Series. It's a Hammer film, Hammer Classics. It can be picked up at, on, I know it definitely could be picked up on Amazon. Yes, so. it is available on Amazon, the whole classic. And I suggest getting it. Collection, there's eight different films. It's Brides of Dracula, The Curse of the Werewolf, The Phantom of the Opera, Parano no huh? Paranoic. Paranoic. The Kiss of the Vampire, Nightmare, Night Creatures, and The Evil of Frankenstein. So, that's what we have, and it is a great collection. It's yeah. all the classics. And it's Hammer, so it's different than, you know, completely different Not than Universal. Not the dancer, but, you know, the... Yeah. The production studio, not not Hammer Time, but you know the production studio. Hammer Film. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, thanks to everybody that has downloaded our. What am I trying to say? Downloaded or watched <laughs> on YouTube uh, our stuff. Remember to share with your friends if you think you'll like it. If not, just continue doing what you're doing. Retweet our stuff. Uh, Anyway, we uh, we do really appreciate mm -hmm. you guys, and uh, we are currently thinking about starting a. My brain is not even wanting to function right now. Starting a um, creepy pasta. Um, contest. So, if anybody is interested in that, I'm going to. Probably be tweeting about that and posting stuff about that on our Facebook. So check out those two. So platforms. we're gonna be putting details about that there, and so we got some creepy bosses to read right too. Okay. Yes. So I want you guys to be aware that we're gonna have that contest coming up soon, and there will be prizes and things going along with that. We actually had someone recently contact us about doing a... Uh, full movie review. 
a movie review for that them. That they filmed. That they filmed. Um, that they actually, did they produce it? Yeah, they, they've done everything, yeah. They produced and filmed, filmed. their own movie. Yeah. Um, We're not going to give it away yet, but yeah. it's, it, it is so, one of my favorites. So, uh, yeah, you guys uh, be on the lookout for that, so that's something well, we're and pretty if you excited have, about. If you, and we've done short films in the past. Uh, yeah, we've had a we've had a, another guy that actually asked us to uh, critique some of his short films, and that was a lot of fun too. So, so if you do short films or full length films, uh, give us some time, but we'll be definitely interested in watching those. And if they're horror related, uh, yes, they have to be horror related. <laughs> they can't be lifetime ish films, you know. But. No, we're we're not interested in that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a girl, but I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> I only watch Lifetime during the holidays because it makes me cry. My mother-in-law makes me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who was I talking to? I don't know. Over the weekend, they said they were watching Lifetime films, and I said, okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> the only way, go now. The only way I could watch Lifetime films is a lot of alcohol, some dairy-free haagen dazs And more alcohol. And more alcohol, and a really good horror film. <laughs> That's the only way I could watch. <laughs> Which do you feel the whole purpose of watching Lifetime? A really sharp tack in the shoe. Have you ever watched a film that you're like, I'm waiting for the killer, and then you realize after you watch the film, you're like, oh, I forgot this was not a horror movie? Yeah, a <laughs> lot. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I bet that person's going to die. When are they going to die? They're not dying yet. Why are they not dying? <laughs> All right, we really got to end it here. Ah, oh, such a letdown when that doesn't happen. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Sorry. And if you like, uh, if you thank like, thank you guys for listening. We're watching. I mean, uh, some people watch us on YouTube. I mean, uh, we don't. It's not anything different. But if you <laughs> like this, definitely uh, tell us that you uh, enjoyed this. Or I'm you, so tired. Or you want us to go back to the the original way of doing it? But I think we have a lot more fun doing it this way. Yeah. As put, long as we don't get sidetracked, but we get sidetracked either way. So what's the difference? I've been, I've been pushing for this since the okay, beginning. Okay, okay. Yeah. We got you. You yeah. want to get pinched, don't you? No. You're wanting to pinch. No. <laughs> no. All right. We'll, we'll scare you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>